I'm, I'm just looking at the billboard and just by seeing it, you just understand, you know, what's in it for, for the audience. This is a great film to be oh, part of, isn't you. it? Thank you. Yeah, I'm really excited about it. And I think a lot of the audiences or potential audiences, if they go and see it, uh, there seems to be excitement for it out there. So, no, I'm, I'm happy to be putting it out. Absolutely. Well, I mean that in the best possible way, but how exhausting is it to be Kevin and his friends? Uh, pretty exhausting. Um, Kevin's pretty emotionally exhausting in himself, but, you know, some of those other characters. Playing Hedwig is usually physically, physically exhausting because he's jumping about and flying about the place. Uh, the Beast is pretty demanding because um, he's always doing something incredibly physically active, or even if he's still, he's completely tensed in a strange position. Um, and the amount of working out I had to do to play that character as well was, was pretty incredible. Intense. So, um, yeah. Hey! How you doing? <laughs> Morning! How's it going? Hey! How are you, Sam? Happy New Year! Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking about even in the billboard, do you feel. Should I listen to that? Should like, even in the billboard, I felt like you were just gonna nice come out. Scar. Look at that scar. It's yeah, cool. yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> nice to see you, buddy. Coming. See you soon. See you in a minute. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> he's lovely. He's <laughs> so, so nice. He's, he's iconic. This is no other ways yeah. to put it. Totally. I'm sorry, we, we were talking about, you know, the, the multiple characters and when you had to tackle them. Yeah, it was tough. It was tough. <laughs> but it was good and it was fun and it was a great challenge. But it was, uh, yeah, it was it presented its, its own difficulties, you know. Yeah, if one day you were to teach acting, this is a perfect acting exercise. Just emulate your characters <clears throat> of glass and split. Oh really? <laughs> just like, well, just watch everybody do one of my performances. <laughs> For your first lesson, I'd like you to do my performance. Go. Go. Uh, yeah, Good luck. Be an awful class, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess so. When you have to change personalities so often and so quickly in a scene, what are the main challenges of that? Memory, keeping up with it. Uh, can you improvise? Uh, Knight doesn't love it when you improvise. He likes to hear. Yeah, I'm sure. He likes to hear the words that he wrote. He's uh, he's fairly. Um, he's he likes what he wrote and he wants to hear it. Uh, weirdly, as Hedwig, he'd let me improvise a little bit more. He'd mm. usually be more receptive to sudden moments of improvisation or ideas that I had to uh, add lines or take away lines sometimes. But um, but with most of the characters, he wanted it as it was written. So not not too much. Um, the most important thing when you're playing all those characters and flipping around, uh, just just trying to stay in control. Mm, it's quite easy to let those things run away from you. And because quite a lot of them were in a similar state of panic or fear or anger, that can sometimes make them very similar uh, or make it easy for them to become similar. So whilst them still feeling an, a, a similar emotion, you've got to find their specific way of expressing that emotion and their specific reason for feeling that same emotion because they might have different reasons for being afraid or different reasons for feeling panic. Um, so it became quite a technical exercise and quite a, mm. you know, you had to la sort of lean on your craft a lot as well as just the full emotion of it. Because a lot of the time in movies, they just want emotion. They want something raw and real. But at the same time, you, you just had to be really technical with it too. Um, it wasn't revealed to the audience until the end of Split that this was part of a trilogy. So how uh, pervy to the story were you? I mean, did, did Knight tell you from the start that this was going to be second and third? No, not really. I, mm. I think when I turned up on Split, I didn't know that it was connected to Unbreakable. Uh, there was a little clue in the script, but it was so tiny and so obscure that I thought, huh, oh well. Um, mm. And so a couple of weeks into making Split, he was talking about, you know, because, you know, the possibility if this one does well, if people go to the movies to see Split and we make some money, we could maybe do Glass and, like, maybe have you running around with David Dunn and all that. And I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, huh? And then quickly put two and two together and I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then a couple of weeks after, I came clean and I was like, you know, dude, I did not get that at all. <laughs> um, so uh, and I, what ends up at the end of Split is much more obvious and clear than what I read in the original script. But, um, and better, just like, it is a great moment at the end of Split. So, but I didn't, I didn't realise the beginning.